Hey guys, Winston at Carbide3D here. Let's talk about how to finish a 3D part. If all you've ever done is cut out vector files, making the jump to 3D can be a bit of a mindset shift. Instead of manually selecting exactly what contour you want to apply a specific toolpath to, the machining of a 3D surface usually involves unceremoniously drowning the model in algorithmically generated toolpaths. But there are ways to be a little more surgical in how you apply them, so let's go through an example where I'll finish machining some beveled edges in Fusion 360. The part here is just a square block with a pocket on top and edges chamfered at an angle of about 15 degrees from vertical. Sketch, extrude, chamfer, those are the only three tools I use to design this. In the CAM workspace, I'll create a setup for this block, which is intended to be cut from a section of 2x4. I'll tell Fusion my stock block is 3.5 by 3.5 by 1.5 inches. The most rudimentary way to approach 3D machining is to apply a 3D roughing toolpath followed by a 3D finishing toolpath and just let Fusion take the wheel. The roughing toolpath will get you close and the finishing toolpath will clean up the rest. But that's not always the most efficient way to do things, especially if you pick a small step over for maximum detail you might find that your CNC ends up spending a lot of time where it doesn't need to be. Luckily, Fusion provides a ton of options for customizing your finish strategy. Let's try applying a parallel toolpath to this part. I'll pick a quarter inch ball end mill and set a cutting feed rate of about 100 inches per minute. I'll set the lead in and ramp feed rates just a tiny bit slower out of an abundance of caution and the plunge feed rate to a conservative 25 inches per minute. We're really not cutting much on the finishing pass so this should be a pretty gentle process. In the Geometry tab, I'll pick contours that will corral the end mill to stay over the sloped portions that we can't finish using a flat end mill. But if I stop here, the resulting toolpath doesn't completely cover my chamfers. The end mill needs to go outside the boundary so it can hit the walls from the side. To do that, we can either explicitly permit the end mill to go outside the contours selected, or use the Contact Point Boundary option which will allow the end mill to go outside the bounds you set as long as it is still touching the desired faces. The contact point boundary option works best here, but let's say you choose to do it the other way. Once Fusion has permission to step outside the outer profile you selected, it will also want to touch up the vertical walls of this part as well. That's both unnecessary and a waste of time because a flat end mill can do it better. We can use a slope constraint to tell Fusion to leave vertical walls and horizontal surfaces alone. And for extra insurance, you have an option to explicitly avoid contact with certain faces if you want even more control in where this toolpath will be applied. Between all of these options in the Geometry tab, you should be able to focus your machining where it matters. And these options all work similarly for a lot of the different 3D finishing strategies in Fusion. Each one has its pros and cons, so read up on their descriptions or just try them out. Here's my part finished using a parallel toolpath with an extra perpendicular pass. Finished using a radial toolpath. Finished using a morphed spiral. And finished using a 3D contour toolpath. In this particular application, with a nice regular geometry, 3D contour is the best fit. My step over for this exercise is about 10% of the end mill diameter, so 0.025 inches. For an extra fine finish you can go down to about 5%, but anything smaller than that is usually a waste of your time. I hope this helps you apply 3D finishing toolpaths more efficiently. Good luck and have fun machining folks.